line in the middle represents the average, okay? So when you look across the different groups, there's not a lot of difference there, right? Um, which is exciting, right? Because there's more variation within the groups than there are between the groups, which is exciting, okay? Because that would be extremely depressing if you're looking at African-American students, American Indian students have extremely lower levels of persistence than white students, right? So we know students do persist. They have the capability to push through and work hard. You do see, though, that so that box represents about 50%. The next whisker, so that line up there is another 25%. The, the next whisker below the box is 25%. One of the things you do see is you do see a wider spread. Uh, for example, your African students, um, and this would be our students who African identified as students who identified as non-English speakers, as your American Indian, right? So there, there's actually a smaller range for American Indian students. Um, there seems to be a greater variation towards the top for our African students. Um, the reason why this becomes relevant is then we were able to take these persistence scores and then connect them to traditional measures, right? Such as reading, math, academic growth, um, a, a average percentage attendance, grade point average, behavior infractions, number of suspensions. This is when it gets exciting, right? Because we're able to take these social emotional measures and we're able to mainstream these things a bit so that it becomes very extremely relevant to the traditional um, uh, institution of K-12, right? Like these things really hold weight. For us though, if you look at these numbers, um, if you look at the average persistence score, that 4.7 for us, so at 4.75, that's that spot where for us may signal, I'll say may because we want to look at the data again, but that holds promise for us. I mean, it turns out an early warning signal, right? Um, that, so students, if you look at that 4.7, um, again, 50 is proficiency. We'll just go across. You, know, you see the average reading score is about uh, 42. Average math is 43, right? Students are at the six, the average is about a 50, right? So you see some difference there. You see some difference in academic growth, right? So again, those are uh, standard deviations, these scores. Uh, but if you see the zero, that's about average academic growth, all right? But if you look at below, you start seeing that those students are 4.7 and below. You start seeing negative academic growth in math and reading. And then those students are near the bottom, 3.5 and below, right? You're looking at about 21, 35% uh, less than expected growth, okay? So you start getting into the danger zone in terms of academic achievement. Um, you know, grade point average, you start seeing differences in grade point average. Um, and in fact, when we look at that scale score, um, so for every difference in that persistence point, you gain about 0.17 on your grade point average. Okay? Um, and for every difference uh, in, in the, in, on the persistence point, you gain about 0.5 of a scale score in math and a 0.6 in reading. Um, and so you start seeing differences between the top and the bottom, right? Um, you know, so between, you're up to a full point, almost a full grade point average between the bottom and the top, okay? Why is that relevant? Because again, this, this strengthens this idea that social emotional measures matter, right? That this idea of it being able to quantitatively measure persistence, that matters. And then once we see that it matters, here's the exciting thing is that now we can start addressing ideas um, in our institution on how to address these things. Uh, for example, so let's talk about what we know. We know there's more variation within the group, so that's great. Uh, we know that there's a relationship between persistence and the traditional academic measures. So again, for us, as a school district, it holds weight, right? So it matters, that's something we should be doing, is we should be creating conditions for students to have higher levels of persistence, all right? Um, we also know that transitions matter. And again, that has huge levels of face validity because we know that for our vulnerable populations, students struggle with change, okay? So for us as a school district, how can we develop better supports grades eight to nine? How can we provide better supports grades five to six, okay, from a practical standpoint? Now here's what the field, uh, and, and this has been fascinating to me, uh, being immersed in the field uh, recently because, um, you know, it's very new and it's very exciting, but again, it's very new in terms of, of having some of the best minds. I mean, I think it's such a boon to have someone like Michael uh, doing measures like this uh, because, because the field hasn't had, the, again, the level of relation, cooperation with school districts, large data sets, um, but, but now this measure is institutionalized, now it matters, now we have the capability to really do some predictive analysis and, and really use this to really help students.